This video is brought to you by the Three Minute Ball Game patrons. Keep us independent by supporting us on Patreon. Kia Koto and welcome to Tilly Tom in about three minutes. Review copy used. It has a solo mode. It's a game for one to four players. Playing time is long and it's a pretty complex game. You are a merchant family in Renaissance Europe. Can you create a trade network and contribute to the construction of cathedrals all over the continent? The game ends after four full rounds of play with each round having three turns per player. The winner is to play with the most points and you get them from many places. Drafting. Each turn you will draft dice and take actions with them. Player turn. Each player has a board. You will have two pillars and houses. The rest are placed on your board for later along with your improvement tiles. The game has five resources that match the dice colors. At the start of the round roll dice based on player count and assign them around this display based on their values. On your turn you will pick one die and gain the number of matching resources. You may then take the action shown here that many times. So for this die that would be five architect actions. The more resources you take the fewer actions you get. If you are the first person to take a die from that group this round you claim a bonus token too. Let's look at the actions. For each architect action you can move your architect one space on the board. You can claim a bonus token from the city you are in and you can place a pillar if you have one. You may take these actions in any order and multiple times. Note the five discs here. I use those to track the five actions my die allowed me to take. Merchant actions are similar, but also allow you to build houses and available spaces if you have them. The people action lets you acquire people tiles here for one action each, or you can reset all of them for one action as well. We have these two people to place on our board, and they must go in the leftmost lane. This is because we have one of that type there already, and each lane must be different. The cost and people actions to place them is shown on the left. Gain any bonuses on them when you place them, and by filling a room like this, we unlock the house on top for use. The contract action lets you trade resources, and the first time you trade one, each turn you get an extra one. It also lets you pick up contracts here and place them on your board. And the king action advances you on this track. This track determines turn order and awards points. The final action is a joker action and it lets you do any other action. At any time in your turn you can do bonus actions called tasks. One is to pay food to place a crest below a room. You then get the special action below it. And it has a completed room above it, you gain a bonus token that improves your later dice drafts. Other tasks include paying resources to complete contracts on your board. Place them in the top row and claim a pillar, gaining points on the contract and below the pillar. You can also build a cathedral by spending the stone shown if you have a pillar there. Gain the points on both the build tile and the cathedral tile. Finally, any player with presence in the current turn's objective city scores that objective's points at the end of each round. Why would you like this game? Teletum is a game for people who like to be able to do a lot of different things on their turn, because it's all about chaining together multiple actions across different parts of the board and setting yourself up for big turns later on. As a result it rewards players who have an overall plan or at least an overall approach because the different dice and available tiles will make you shift and adapt constantly throughout the game. The dice values marker changes position at the end of each turn so actions that were easy to do become harder later and vice versa. Planning around that is quite interesting. That said I think this game is best suited to experienced Euro gamers and other veterans of the hobby. The best thing about this game is the core dice system. Trading actions for resources is a good decision point. However some turns can get very silly with a lot of actions and extra actions. This player could take 7 actions plus whatever their die result was plus any bonus actions they obtained this turn. Sometimes this feels cool but a lot of the time it just makes the game feel sloppy. And that's Tillitum in a nutshell. A game that feels like it should be a tight euro but is really quite meandering at times. And this colour palette is a joke. Three different greys, come on. And for a different take on action wheels, try Praga Kaput Regni. And for a different take on dice drafting, try Twa. Tillitum, this is not blue. And if you enjoyed this video, Hit the notification button, like, share and subscribe to the channel.